so uh, how did i think of uh, this the big question was so all of us are faced with this so i actually love speaking in, in hindi but uh, unfortunately there are number of foreigners also so i'll have to stick to english uh, <laughs> so whatever it is the question so so what happened was you know how this question came to my mind was that my one of my mentors and one of the finest glaucoma minds dr g chandrashekhar one day sent a patient to me uh, he is in hyderabad so he sent it to uh, said dr hash uh, dr chandrashekhar i sent please operate uh, my cataract i said but you have got a glau advanced glaucoma sir please read what sir has written so i was really flabbergasted because all our lives we have been taught but this is something but that we have to learn that there is only one thing permanent in life and that is change so it is things are going to change the way we are thinking so and he said just do cataract and he is an advanced glaucoma and that that made me start thinking what the hell is happening over here have things changed and that is when i started looking at this thing very very closely and i gave a thesis to one of my fellows and we really started looking at these things so why it is becoming greater problem all of you are facing it there, there is an elderly population rising they have cataracts and now we are detecting glaucomas and once you detect glaucoma what happens the problem is you can't do a proper field you can't check the disc properly because of the cataract you cannot do any oct like sunita told you so many times the oct is such a difficult thing to do especially in these cases it's pretty much tough then uh, and not only that their peripheral vision is gone because of glaucoma the central vision is gone because of cataract and you are wondering what to do should i do only a cataract should i do a combined should i do a trab only so this is what we were really thinking and what when we look back into the literature what is there is that in the initial cataract surgeries obviously it was uh, it was the pressure lowering was not much but since the cataract surgeries have been advanced and i am proud to say that everybody is doing a wonderful cataract surgery the days are gone when i used to get a complicated cataract and done and something has happened over here not at all beautiful so and when you look at that you find that almost 7 to 22% lowering is there there is a there is a medications which can be stopped from almost 50% of the patients and if you look at the practice patterns even in us unfortunately we don't have that design here but so many patients are now undergoing feco alone and again they have got migs now which we have started also but feco plus uh, the minimally invasive glaucoma surgery whatever form and uh, feco trap has shrunk quite a bit and they actually they 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 love doing tubes also many times they are teaching tubes before they teach their uh, fellows how to do a trap but not for us for us traps are still primary but see how the patterns are changing and uh, we all know about angle closure glaucoma because one of the causes of angle closure may be the uh, lens fault and you may be having a thicker lens which is creating all this problem so the moment you take the lens out you get a deeper chamber it removes the pupillary block the pressure lowering obviously would depend upon whether there is a trabecular damage over there or not but otherwise doing an acg a cataract surgery is great but you have to be very ca careful because you have to be a good surgeon there is a shallow ac there is a coronal damage they already have been on so many medications zonules may be weak so and the high iop very much may be there and many times when you have very high iop and the chambers are shallow the high iop you have controlled but the chambers are shallow sometimes you can actually under uh, do a core vitrectomy to deepen out the chambers and make life easier for yourself as far as the open angle is concerned we know that the high uh, fluid which is generated over there actually washes off the glycosamine and glycan deposition and there are some other biochemical changes but somehow the other pressure definitely drops and uh, and that is what i love about mix you know when we are doing mix with cataract the patient never actually understand it is because of the cataract or because of the mix that the pressure has dropped so we can always take the benefit that yes it was because of the mix so if you see the whole uh, story over there in a meta analysis 
yes, almost 7 to 20 percent of the lowering of pressure is there once you do only a cataract. So just to share two simple cases, uh, you know, one obviously the 65 year old female and uh, uh, cataract right eye, uh, CCT normal, pressure normal. The pressure was normal on three medication, Brimo, Brinzo combination along with Bimato. So that is what the patient was taking. The pressures are pretty normal. The fields were re reasonably okay, 79% VFI. And uh, then obviously we, the patient was very clear that they wanted only cataract surgery. And uh, so obviously Biomat was stopped, Timo was started anyway. So surgery was taken and you can see the pre-op and the post-op. The post-op field obviously will be a slightly better uh, because uh, of the cataract being, uh, going away from there. There will be an elevation of pressure. There was a pressure 30 millimeters, then 24, then 20 and gradually six months later the pressure was absolutely normal. Within two weeks the pressure absolutely settles down with whatever little extra medications and estazolamide, etc. Now this is another case. So in this case, left eye 612, 70 year old male, uh, reasonable cataract and the field is 8%, 0.9 and the patient is not willing. Nay sir, just do cataract. I don't want glaucoma surgery. Uh, because with glaucoma surgery, I've been told there can be a wipeout, there can be this, there can be that, just do cataract surgery. So we explained to him, okay, fine, we will do cataract surgery. In case there are spikes, in case we cannot control. So whenever you do something like this, tell them in case there are spikes and I cannot uh, control the pressure, which happened to me only once in a very close friend of mine. Ten days later, I operated for TRAB after having done the cataract and later he settled down. But this has to be told to the patient that in case things do not settle down, okay, you want a cataract, I am doing a cataract only, it merits a combined surgery, but I am doing only a cataract provided you stay with me for some time and if the pressures rise beyond a certain limit and we cannot control them, that is what we will do. So uh, with uh, God's name in our mind, we did the care case only cataract this is the pre-op and this is the post-op visual fields so since then i have been really really intrigued and i think this is one topic that we'll discuss with all the panelists and we have luckily dr pandav also here that what exactly do they think about it because my whole approach has changed and uh, so i am not at all now so scared of doing only a cataract even in advanced glaucoma case provided they are comfortable on their medicines, provided they are well controlled on their medications. Then this is an option after telling them that yes, maybe we'll have to do something else also. So uh, obviously patients with pre-existing forms of glaucoma are at a greater risk for post-operative IOP spikes. 18 to 45 percent of patients may experience an IOP greater than 28 millimeter. Most pressures will return to normal by 24 hours and I have been following multiple multiple cases touch wood we have never had a drop of field in any of these cases even in it like I what could be more advanced than the case I showed you so uh, the peaks more commonly occur in 8 to 12 hours so that you have to watch them very closely for a few days and uh, almost 10% uh, of cases may record higher than 30 but invariably it drops down. So whenever you are doing a surgery in such a case the trick is keep the wound a little on the loser side, uh, do a extensive wash so that there is no viscoelastic that is the one case which actually elevates the pressure for us. So no viscoelastic should be left, no lens debris should be left, be very very careful and sucking out everything from all around and uh, they should be able to follow up regularly with you. So, uh, but obviously, uh, should cataract surgery be considered a glaucoma surgery? No, not at all. We are very clear about that. When we need to do a glaucoma surgery, we will do a glaucoma surgery. But world over, people are more comfortable doing a cataract. Let them do a cataract. Let the pressure come down to some extent so that the number of medications will come down, conjunctival scarring will be rest, uh, the medication burden will be reduced and when we have to do the surgery, we will be easier off. Combined surgeries are more difficult, much, much more difficult. 
even a busy practitioner is not doing more than one or two or three traps if he's a cataract surgeon. So to do a combined is not a joke. Their failure rate is higher in controlling pressure as compared to a plain trabeculectomy. So, and they, the chances of wipe out this and that, all of them are there. So only if the pressures are not controlled on medication, patient cannot take medication, patient is poor, in, uh, who will not put medication or uh, cannot afford medication and the fields are worsening despite putting medication which seemingly are giving adequate control. In all these situations, yes, we will not do anything else except either a combined or a trabeculectomy. So this is what I wanted to